Now, for the second part of our in-depth today, we'll be looking more closely at the North Korea-related outcomes of the summit. For that, we have joining us via video now from Washington, D.C., former Ambassador Robert Gallucci, who was the chief U.S. negotiator during the North Korea nuclear crisis in 1994 and who served as Assistant Secretary of State for Political and Military Affairs. He is currently a distinguished professor at Georgetown University. Ambassador Gallucci, thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me. Could you, give us, could you first give us your overall assessment of the summit between President Moon and Biden? President Moon was very positive over it. What did you make of it? Uh, it seemed to me to go off without a hitch. Uh, I think there were several issues that might have come up that might have caused some bumps. Uh, but <clears throat> I think the emphasis was placed on the alliance and then the other issues outside of security that... Uh, two countries uh, could work together on. So I, I thought it went very well. What potential bumps were you wary of? Well, the first one uh, had to do with uh, the desire uh, that I think everybody was aware of that President Moon would like to move ahead uh, with relations with uh, the DPRK, um, not only uh, have the United States move ahead with uh, <clears throat> an engagement of some kind, but also uh, an opportunity for the South to engage with the North and a number of different projects uh, that they have discussed and even begun to work on together in the past. Uh, and the question, I think, in the minds of at least some of us was, uh, was the president of the Republic of Korea's enthusiasm for engaging the North going to exceed uh, the desires of uh, Washington uh, to proceed, uh, was there going to be more enthusiasm for concessions, for example, mm -hmm. on the part of Seoul, as opposed to uh, what Washington might prefer. So there is the management of the engagement with North Korea. There is also, I think, in, again, the minds of some of us, a question about whether the topic of the Quad, the... Uh, uh, rather uh, recently developed uh, structure uh, between uh, India, Japan, Australia, and the United States, uh, whether that was as it was broached uh, to Seoul, hmm. uh, was that going to create a tension uh, in terms of what uh, South Koreans might prefer uh, in, uh, with respect to Beijing and uh, how Beijing might perceive uh, Seoul's engagement uh, with the other four. Hmm. So that was a second uh, issue that might be a problem. And I think a third undoubtedly was uh, the enthusiasm Washington has for an improvement in relations between Tokyo and Seoul, uh, which would make, of course, our planning uh, to deal with North Korea ever so much easier. And uh, even that was in the in the joint statement, I think, handled pretty well. So uh, those are the ones that immediately come to my mind and are in the security area. I'm sure there are others in the in vaccines and health and and in commerce. But those are the ones that were on my mind. Now, in terms of North Korea, Moon and Biden agreed that they will build upon where President Trump left off. In a joint statement, Moon and Biden said that they reaffirmed their common belief that diplomacy and dialogue based on previous inter-Korean and U.S.-North Korea commitments, such as the 2018 Panmunjom Declaration and the Singapore joint statement. Uh, Biden also told reporters that the U.S. closely studied what others have tried, uh, what worked, what hasn't worked, and his administration is under no illusions how difficult denuclearization is. Ambassador, what are your overall implications of the joint statement and uh, Biden's remarks, especially when it comes to references to the 2018 agreements? Does it signal that Washington is trying to pick up from where the talks collapsed between Trump and Kim in the 2019 Hanoi summit? I, I may be alone in this reaction to, uh, on this point, but I didn't take as particularly significant um, the reference to picking up where uh, the Trump administration left off at Singapore. I think it was a, as a nod to a, um, a positive step that was made by his predecessor. Uh, and I think it was also a, a, a way of 
drawing a distinction between continuing negotiation on the one hand uh, and uh, this strategic patience of the Obama administration on the other hand. And the U.S. policy is that, as it was explained before um, <clears throat> uh, President Moon arrived, uh, was that it was going to be neither. It wasn't going to be the big deal uh, mm. in which we try to do everything at once, which has been associated with uh, the Trump administration, nor was it going to be uh, a matter of stepping back uh, and taking no initiative, which is uh, the way the Obama administration was perceived. So uh, that we knew before. I think the, the real question was going to be, uh, was we, were we going to learn anything more about how the United States proposes to engage North Korea? And I don't think we learned much, though I would say if, if we get no more in the way of clues, uh, the, the situation seems as though there'll be a more traditional diplomatic approach uh, to the North by Washington. Uh, and we can expect the newly named uh, negotiator uh, for North Korean affairs, uh, the former ambassador to, in Seoul uh, from the United States, uh, to look to meet with his opposite number at the working level and that there be a working level engagement uh, with Pyongyang uh, rather than a major summit right off the bat. So that's, uh, that's all I could really get out of it. I don't think we should read too much into the substance of the uh, we'll pick up where we left off before mm. comment about Singapore, except for one point. And it's an important point only for those who have been reading tea leaves for the last year or so in Washington. And those tea leaves have said that a lot of observers think the United States ought to simply walk away from the denuclearization objective. They ought to, quote, recognize reality, close quote, and understand that North Korea is, quote, again, never, close quote, gonna give up its nuclear weapons. We didn't hear that. We heard that the objective of the United States remains denuclearization. It doesn't mean it'll happen on one day, mm. on a Thursday, but it, it does mean that that still remains uh, the goal for engagement with the North from the American side so that they will continue to engage with North Korea and uh, work towards the ultimate aim of denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Now, what was noticeable about the joint statement was well, was that uh, there was also mention about North Korea's human rights situation, saying that the two sides will work together to improving. That is something that South Korea has uh, generally tried to sidestep to encourage North Korea to talk. So its inclusion was, as I said, noticeable. What does the issue of North Korea human rights conditions, uh, how does that come into play here? Well, I'm not sure myself how uh, Washington sees it in terms of diplomatic engagement with the North. Is this something they would want to take up uh, early on in engagement, or is it something to be left uh, for a later time? My own view, and but uh, let me be clear here, this is not... I don't want to foist this view on the administration, which may not look at matters this way. <clears throat> Excuse me, but my own view uh, is that uh, the normalization of relations, which the United States says it's perfectly willing, indeed enthusiastic to work towards, should we be able to persuade the North Koreans to work towards denuclearization, the normalization of relations really is going to require, at the end of the day, uh, North, that North Korea embrace uh, policies with respect to the way it treats its own people uh, that comport with international standards, uh, UN standards. Uh, so the human rights issue to me has always seemed one which uh, needed to be dealt with. Uh, it didn't need to be dealt with up front. Uh, it doesn't need to be the first thing that we talk about. But I think we must continue to mention it and continue to talk about it because it's very hard, I think, to imagine a settlement between Washington and, and uh, Pyongyang in which there's a true normalization of relations if there's in the way uh, North Korea uh, understands the standards of human rights and the way it treats, as I say, its own people. How do you think North Korea... Uh, will react to the outcomes of the Mumbai Biden summit? 
Well, that's a good question. Um, and I have to be clear that I certainly don't know the answer. Um, I, I, I hope that the North was not expecting that uh, President Moon would persuade Washington to immediately move to uh, sanctions relief for Pyongyang. That was implausible if it was a, an expectation of the North. I don't know that it was. I hope that it was not. Um, my hope is that uh, the North will see uh, that the United States is consistent in what it says it wants to do in its negotiations with the North, that it has a strong alliance with the South, uh, and that it wants to do uh, practical things, a phrase I think that the administration used when it was rolling out its policy. And uh, if the North is truly interested in engagement, then that should all be good news. Now, despite President Moon's positive assessment of the summit, time is running out for him uh, and his administration, as well as his inter-Korean peace legacy. His term will end in May next year. What do you think is a reasonable level of progress that the Moon administration can expect or should expect in terms of the situation in North Korea and nuclear talks and inter-Korean relations before his time? Right. I, I, I think we all understand that there is an election coming uh, next year, next spring in, uh, in Seoul, and that uh, an improvement in relations between North and South, as well as between the North and the United States, has been uh, a signature uh, policy of, of uh, President Moon and his party. That said, uh, I think that uh, the idea that the previous American administration had uh, that uh, as opposed to negotiating for a year, a year and a half, is, which is what I recollect doing about 25 years ago to get what was called the agreed framework, the, uh, the expe expectation of the Trump administration that they could meet for lunch and uh, they could solve everything and they'd be done before the weekend was over. That uh, has always struck me as a bit bizarre. And, uh, and I think... Uh, as long as that is not the character of the expectation of the Korean people, then uh, uh, an, even a, a preliminary agreement that uh, picks out, let's say, pieces of the uh, a North Korean uh, nuclear weapons program uh, and freezes those or, or, or a dismantlement of facilities is involved. In other words, a serious substantive step in the direction of denuclearization, if we should be able to achieve something like that in the coming year, I would think that that would be good news uh, for President Moon and his party. Meanwhile, President Biden announced that the former U.S. ambassador to Seoul, Sung Kim, had been appointed as the new special envoy for North Korea, a move that President Moon called a, a surprise a present. Kim is a veteran of uh, North uh, Korean uh, affairs who specialized, who was served as a special envoy to the six party talks with North Korea during the Obama administration, as well as playing a key role coordinating the 2018 Singapore summit. So he's a familiar figure to both Koreas as well as the US. What role do you think Sung Kim will play? Well, I hope it's a substantive and serious one. Uh, I think that describes him as a diplomat, substantive and serious. Uh, and I, I like to uh, think that it would be the consistent with the policy uh, review of the Biden administration that they uh, support, endorse uh, their negotiator, and they, in, in a sense, empower him uh, to engage the North seriously and prepare the way for uh, substantive steps at both normalization on the one hand and denuclearization on the other. And despite the generally positive assessment that people have made of the Moon uh, Biden summit, do you sense any gaps between Seoul and Washington in terms of how to deal with North Korea? Are there any gaps that remain, do you think? Well, I think probably there's a difference in perspective. I mean, I, 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 our policies overlap. We're allies, but they, it would be odd if they were congruent. 
uh, in other words, precisely the same. I, I, I wouldn't expect that, and that's not necessary. When there is a, a gap, and I expect there is, in the degree of enthusiasm for the first initial steps at sanctions relief, I'm guessing here that um, the, the time frame for that and the, and the preliminary moves by the North that would justify such a thing, uh, that that assessment might differ in, in Seoul from what it might be in Washington. But as long as the two sides can agree how they're going to proceed, even if their perspectives and the weight they put on, on certain things is somewhat different, that need not be a problem. Allies don't have to be in perfect uh, agreement on every point for the alliance to be successful and strong. And so I, I, I think, to go back to your very first question, what came out of the su summit is the uh, uh, appearance and, and the reality, I think, of a very healthy alliance between Seoul and Washington. And finally, how would you advise uh, possibly Sung Kim and other officials in charge of North Korea issues <laughs> in the US and South Korean governments as we move forward? I, I actually am <clears throat> not in the advice business anymore. <laughs> um, I, I do have views, and the views are that the uh, administration is on the right track, as I understood it from the policy review. Uh, I did think that uh, we were not aggressive enough in trying to move the North Koreans to the table in the Obama administration. I did believe that we were expecting too much to come out of a single meeting head uh, between heads of state in the Trump administration, and I'm much more comfortable uh, with the Biden administration approach, at least as I understand it, that it is realistic and, as they say, practical. Ambassador Gallucci, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much.